Welcome to Theory and Characterology. This is a show where we take a deeper dive into the background stories of the characters that make up the universe of Guild Wars 2. I'll be starting off with the current most relevant group of characters in the living story, specifically the group thus far known by the community only as Destiny's Edge 2.0 or the Bee Iconics. Six individuals who have had quite an influence on the living story so far and will have even larger roles in the upcoming expansion. In this episode, we'll focus on Rox. So let's get started. The story of Rox begins long before we meet her in game. She was once a part of the Pick Warband, a group of Char who Rox considered her closest, all of whom, along with Rox's pet skewer, were killed in a mining accident. From then on, Rox was a Gladium, a Char without a warband, alone. The first time we meet Rox, some time has passed since the accident. At this time, she is embarked on a personal mission, to become part of Ridlock Brimstone's mysterious stone warband, amply taking on the name of Rox Whetstone. Her first assignment? I need you to secure that hatchery we discussed. You think you can handle that? Yes, Tribune. I'll leave right away. At the Nolan Hatchery, she first encounters the Molten Alliance, and along with the help of the pack commander, manages to push them out of the hatchery, but not in time to stop them from capturing several workers. She does, though, manage to rescue a baby albino devourer, named Frostbite, who decides to accompany her. It shows me. Well, it suits you. Train it well. In the meantime, a Norn named Brahm Airson is also fighting the Molden Alliance on another front. Due to the connection that both Brahm and Rox have to the Pack Commander, they all eventually partner up alongside the Vigil to take on the Alliance's Molden facility in order to save the captured Char and Norn and blow up the facility. At the end of their endeavor, Rox and Brahm seem to have become accustomed to one another, but decide to split up to take care of their own things. I feel good, exhausted, and hungry. Yeah. So if you're ever near Cragstead, you better stop by. If I come to Cragstead, it won't be to lounge around your hearth. It'll be to grab you for mission support. I'll keep my mace handy. You do that. I'll see you around, Cub. Rox reports back to Ridlock with good news. And being an impatient loner, she decides to ask him. I was wondering, Trudy, when... When will you know if you're qualified to join my warband? When I'm damn good and ready, Gladium. And not before. Yes, Tribune. Sorry, Tribune. Now that Ridlock has a firm grip around Rox, he decides to send her off to the Queen's Jubilee as part of the official delegation from the Black Citadel. Rox decides to invite Brahm along to the festivities. The Jubilee is unfortunately sabotaged by the devious Scarlet Briar, and so Rox, Brahm, and the pack commander find themselves in the midst of this chaos. They fortunately end up foiling Scarlet's plans and saving Divinity's Reach from further disaster. As Rox returns to the Black Citadel, she is charged by Ridlock with the task of slaying to quarrel the Sunless, one of the champions of the Elder Dragon Saitan, in order to further her progress in her trials for the Stone Warband. With much effort, she succeeds. Next time we meet Rox, she has traveled with Brahm to the newly discovered Tower of Nightmares, inhibited by the Toxic Alliance. Here Rox is introduced to Casimir Mead and Marjorie Delacroix, the two humans who unveiled the illusion that covered the tower. The four individuals accompany the pack commander into the tower to bring it down and discover its secret. They succeed and find that once again Scarlet Briar was involved. Scarlet expands her reign and begins testing her huge machines in Lorna's Pass. Joining the fight against the machine known as the Marionette is Marjorie, Casimir, Rox, and Brahm, as well as a young Asuran progeny named Taimi, with her golem Scruffy. After the defeat of the marionette, Rox finally gets a chance to return to Quaddle's tale to Ridlock. Wait, you took down to Quaddle? As reported, sir. I sent you a missive requesting an audience. Yeah, been busy, but I'm here now. In turn, Ridlock decides to give her a final task for her trial. I've been hearing about this Scarlet Silvari. I want you to take her down. Permanently, whatever the cost. You do that, Rox, and you're in the warband. But her newfound friend, Brahm, is not too excited for her. If I kill Scarlet, I'm in the warband. You'd rather be in your fancy warband than with people who've been beside you all this time? That's not what I said. It's a big deal to get into the stone warband. Why, because it'll make you special? You're already special, at least to me. Not long after this, we also learn that Rox once had a maid, one of the Char who were part of her old warband. What about you, Rox? Anyone special in your life? No. There was once, but he was killed. Following all these events, the different factions that have turned out to be part of Scarlet's army 
Attack lines arch, devastating the city. Rox, Brahm, Casimir, and Marjorie all come to the aid of the pack commander and the Lion Guard in regaining control of the city. As Scarlet's Breachmaker is breached, Rox, Brahm, Kashmir, Marjorie, and the pack commander follow Scarlet to the lower depths of the Breachmaker, only to find the crazed Salvari on the ground attempting to hold her own. In an attempt to end Scarlet, Marjorie and Brahm are badly hurt. Seeing how badly her friend is hurt, Rox chooses the safety of Brahm over the chance to kill Scarlet and become part of Ridlock's warband. No, I can't leave you here like this. The pack commander takes over the situation and put an end to Scarlet. Unfortunately, not before she succeeds in waking the Elder Dragon Mordremoth. Here, the first season is concluded. The story continues into Dry Top, where the pack commander is accompanied by the five current B Iconics, where they seek to learn more about Mordremoth. Rox eventually come to seek out Ridlock and Imperator Smodor to ask for their assistance against this new threat, even though Rox has hit from Ridlock since she disobeyed him. You want me to talk the Imperator into attending your summit? And yet you disobeyed my order to end Scarlet. I... <clears throat> I had to make a battlefield decision, Tribune. In trying to gain Ridlock's allegiance, Rox and the Pack Commander accompany Ridlock down the ghostly catacombs to try and put an end to the curse that lies over Ascalon. The ritual fails, and Rox tries to jump in after Ridlock to save him. I need to go after him. The portal is closed. You can't. But... Uh... From here, Rox sticks by the group and helps the Pack Commander push further into Mordrum infested regions. As the season concludes, we leave Rox and the rest of the B Iconics as they prepare to enter the heart of Maguma to save the Pack forces and confront Mordrumoth. Next time, we'll take a look at the story of Brahm Ersan. Thank you all for watching, until next time, I will see you in the mists.